Hi everybody, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are, and welcome to OpenJS World. My name is Justin Dolly, and I'm the Chief Security Officer at Sauce Labs, and I'll be joined momentarily by Christian Broman. Um, we're here, um, it's a pleasure to be here and exciting to be sharing with you some of the innovations that we're working on um, to be able to give you and our customers more insights and a deeper understanding of your software. Why am I standing in front of you as a security professional? Well, I'm standing in front of you because I'm responsible for the security of Sauce Labs, which includes not only our company and our users and our networks, but also the platform and services that our customers use 24 hours a day. I've been leading security at public and private companies for more than 20 years, but I have something to admit to you, and that is I am a tester. I've always regarded myself as a tester. If you think about it, the act of testing is a pretty big important part of any security program because it provides you with results and those results if they are treated in the right ways uh, can provide deep insights to be able to allow you to make risk decisions these signals are criti critically important and to date i think have been relatively speaking underserved we aim to change that situation by providing you with security signals alongside all of the rest of the signals that we provide as you go through your current testing routines. So the quality of your software can be as good as it can possibly be. After all, security issues are just simply an outcome due to a lack of quality. It just so happens that these days, the security outcome is one of the graver outcomes given our current technology landscape. And now I'd like to pass it over to Christian Broman for more information on why we do these things and to give you a little bit more detail. Christian. Thanks, Justin. And hello, everyone. As a DevOps engineer, we are living by three very important mantras, which are increase automation within the software development lifecycle, um, therefore allow faster delivery of features and software, which is essentially shipped with high quality and therefore contains as less bugs as possible. And we see that more and more responsibilities are moved towards the developer. Uh, we see that in testing, we see that in DevOps. Instead of having one team that builds a feature, one that tests it and one that deploys them, um, many orgs have moved towards a unique delivery team that uh, develops, tests and deploys at once. And therefore um, takes ownership of the complete pipeline. The advantage, of course, uh, less back and forth between teams, which means less cross-department communication, which results in faster time to delivery. It not only saves time, but also a lot of resources. Now we, we see the same now, the same desire now happen in the security space. Rather than having a dedicated, dedicated security team auditing software very far, very far at the end of the software development lifecycle, we want the majority of that work done in an automated fashion early in the development. It applies to the same shift left principle, shift left principle um, as we see in other disciplines. Now, as a developer, the question is when and how do I have to test uh, the security of my application? Um, as with all types of tests uh, within security, there are various approaches for different areas within the software development lifecycle. Um, starting from threat modeling, which is uh, a process to identify potential threats such as structural vulnerabilities or the absence of appropriate safeguards way before the development even starts. Then we come into the uh, SAS area, which, is, uh, which stands for Static Application Security Testing, uh, which is an approach similar to what we know as, unit, uh, as code, uh, code linting, where you scan your code uh, uh, to try to discover uh, problems, in, in this case, security problems. Like all linting tools, this offers fast feedback and allows to detect a lot of issues. But the value of those signals is often very low and uh, you see, do you get a lot of false positives? Um, lastly, there's a security uh, testing in the infrastructure of code, um, and as well as security monitoring and attack, uh, attack detection, which come with their own uh, complexity and challenges. So from all these stages, uh, which one would you think uh, is part of the you know, developer uh, development lifecycle, 
but has not really much explored where, when it comes to tooling. Um, that's right, uh, it's the DAST approach. Um, there are plenty of uh, well-working tools in the uh, static security analysis space um, from you know, starting looking at a uh, SaaS provider like SNCC or integrated tools in GitHub, uh, for instance, the dependency management tool they have there or uh, SAML, which is a code analysis platform that was acquired by GitHub in 2019. Um, this, however, is just one way of testing security, right? Um, security in general, there's no silver bullet to it. Uh, there will be never one single tool that allows you, that can guarantee you the security of your whole application. Um, this is why there are so many stages. Dust in this area is the security end-to-end -end approach that uh, as opposed to SAS provides much more valuable signals for us as developer to act on. Now, why is this interesting for us? Um, we at SAS have been thinking about this over the last couple of months. And, and we, we thought that it, we see in this space that security testing is not really accessible to everyone. Um, at SAS we are running over 3 million tests every day which is a very large number. And this gives us a huge advantage compared to any other uh, competitors in the market because we know your application from the in and out. Based on your functional test, we know where you log in and which credential you may use. Uh, we know the process of your checkout flow, which steps and pages are involved. And most importantly, what data is being transmitted from one form to another. All these information help us to properly analyze the application on the test to provide you insightful and meaningful signals. That said, this solution can not only be applied on source labs, it can be deployed uh, on all running tests um, across all vendors or even locally. Um, because one of the big problems we have here in the security space and in general in the security tooling space is um, that the People have to implement scanners to, into, to understand your application. Um, those scanners need to be able to go through a login to access a secure area. Um, running functional tests um, already solves that problem for you uh, by uh, accessing that through functional uh, commands, uh, through WebDriver or newer tools like Cypress. So with your functional test, you can already prepare everything that you need to analyze the security of your application thoroughly. The question now becomes, you know, what, what kind of tool would be ideal to build on top of an existing testing infrastructure? Um, sure, we, we could implement a new proprietary solution in our company. However, that would mean that we would need to reinvent the wheel. Um, we at SourceApps found that um, a, a perfect fit um, that is also open source and can be used on top of your functional test. This tool is called OWASP. OWASP is not only open source and part of the OWASP foundation, it is a trusted tool by security experts uh, with a long development history. Uh, I think its first release was somewhere around 2010 and it has been always developed in the open since then. And there are also some very interesting similarity to, to WebDriver, which is a protocol that you know, it's driving functional tests uh, from the begin with, uh, which is it's built with an API first in mind. This means that you can, um, that all interactions with the application, with the tool is abstracted into API endpoints. That means that you can deploy that tool similar to deploy a, a driver uh, anywhere in the cloud and operate to it uh, through API clients. The way, Zap works is that you can use it for, for instance, crawling your page to analyze uh, what the browser is doing, uh, to analyze what the browser is requesting and receiving during the exploration. There are two types of scanners. One is uh, a headless approach where um, Zap is doing requests on your behalf and scans the HTML response and you know parses links and see what's what's page just next to crawl. And the second one is an HX scanner, which is designed to uh, operate on top of a browser uh, to allow you to inspect also single page application, which are not rendered when 
not necessarily rendered when you request them from the browser. Another way to explore an application is also by using Zap as a proxy, which is a really fantastic future feature here. By automating it through WebDriver using Selenium, WebDriver.io, or other tools, um, you can use them to write automated tests, automated functional tests to explore your application in an automated fashion. So instead of you know, your browser making requests to the internet, it tunnels all the requests uh, through the ZAP, Zap proxy. And, you can, and those kind of information can be later used for scanning purposes. Now, if we move Zap into the cloud and connect our functional tests uh, with them, this can, be, this can become a very powerful setup. Um, your functional tests can crawl your application 100 times more efficient than every scanning tool would do. Uh, so that scanning vulnerabilities with Zap in the cloud can be 10 times faster because you can run them in parallel rather than executing that or scanning manually. Um, so that eventually testing functionality and security becomes almost uh, one single workflow. So let me show you how this workflow might look like in your company. Let me introduce you to Christine Watson. She's leading the QA team. Uh, she's leading the QA team in her company. She and her team have been running a lot of functional tests in their uh, Selenium grid that they have deployed in their CI system. And they are now getting the requirement to ensure that they also add security tests to make sure that security bugs are caught early in development. Her tests are written in Node.js. And now she wonders how what she needs to to do to fulfill these new requirements. She finds out about the capabilities that OS Lab provides them. So she starts uh, uh, deploying over Snap in the cloud or locally um, and starts tunnel all the browser traffic through that application. Um, to do that, you need to start Snap as a daemon um, to wherever your machine runs your test, uh, for instance, your CI uh, server. Then you apply the appropriate uh, proxy capabilities in your uh, web driver uh, setup uh, so that um, the browser is started in a way that it automatically proxies the request through OS Lab. The nice thing about this is that you can enable this for all browser tests. Um, applying proxy settings is part of the web driver protocol and therefore works across all the browsers. So besides these small settings, Christine can keep, uh, keep running the test the same way as she did before. Now, while her tests are running now uh, and Christine is getting a coffee, which gives me some time to explain the options that you have after your functional tests are done. So many of you will have different kinds of security requirements. Uh, I had conversation with folks that said, I would never fail my pipeline because of security reasons. Um, others said that, they would be actually indeed interested doing that because they are running and testing a critical security related uh, component in their infrastructure. What you see here that it comes ultimately down to what your team's requirements are and every team's requirements can be different. Um, adding security tests to your pipeline will have some implications to it. For instance, Scanning for vulnerabilities will definitely add some additional time and therefore might be slowed down your pipeline overall. Um, and you know, with that, um, you know, slow down the time that you can you know, test and deploy new features to production. However, when you run everything in the cloud, you can start analyzing and scanning for vulnerabilities um, while your functional tests are already run, uh, are still running. Um, so our goal should it be to, to always opt in for security tests because, because we can run them in an efficient manner uh, in parallel um, while some other checks are still being executed. And um, security in itself is um, you know, also very difficult to, to uh, describe. Uh, security does mean different things to different people, right? Uh, Certain vulnerabilities that are critical for one person might not be for the other. Um, and there will be, again, no tool, no service uh, that will give you uh, a feature or uh, the assurance that 
the who application that you provide or that you want to deploy is secure. The fact here is that by detecting and mitigating common vulnerabilities early in the software development lifecycle cycle, you give your security engineer more times to focus on the difficult aspects of your overall architecture. In case of Christine's teams, uh, their policy is it to you know uh, to check uh, after every before every deployment uh, how many security bugs uh, bugs exist in their recent tech version of their system. Um, so if you store these up sessions that you have been opened during your functional test and you put them into a cloud bucket, you can always download them at all times and access them through Zap proxy um, to use them for scanning security vulnerabilities. So every functional test therefore can now store not only general logs like Selenium logs or web driver logs, uh, it will now also store Zap sessions um, that include a lot of data on requests and responses that the browser has been made uh, was making during the functional test. And Christine can trigger these scanning uh, these vulnerability scans completely automatically by using by downloading the Zap session from the bucket and using the Zap client to trigger the uh, security scans. Zap as a tool comes with a lot of utilities equipped. Uh, to give you a nice overview about all the uh, vulnerabilities that are exist in your application. Now, if you manage this, of course, within a cloud platform, you can make this much more simpler by just having a click on a button or you know, providing a CLI client that does everything for you. Now, for the last build, Christine found 10 new vulnerabilities. Um, some of them are related to things like missing security headers or a secret key in one of the JavaScript files or uh, you know, something really simple and common. These things are really easy to fix. Christine knows her application and she knows how to fix, uh, how to apply patches to fix those issues. However, with, she needs help with one critical bug that she has seen that she hasn't seen before nor anyone in her team. Um, with the help of a Jira integration that she's using, she is sending that security vulnerability to uh, one of uh, her security engineers working at her company. Um, that security engineer can now download the same Zap session and can use the Zap GUI to inspect what happened during the functional test. So he downloads the session, drags and drops it into the over SAP UI and introspect all the requests and responses, finds the vulnerability and message Christine's back with uh, all the information she needs to mitigate that problem in the future. Um, so with that, Christine and her dev team are happy because uh, they have shipped a more secure application and um, the security engineer is happy because he made the internet a little bit safer. Now I said in the beginning that there's no silver bullet for security. Um, well. The closest thing that gets to it is awareness within developer and QA teams. So to sum up this little workflow ex example, with OverSAP and, and functional testing using WebDriver and Selenium, you will be always you will be able you are able to analyze the vulnerabilities of your application by using your functional test. With OverSAP under the hood, you can create you can create uh, some deep analysis on the most uh, common vulnerabilities that exist. Uh, things like you might have heard about the Overs Top 10, which are which is an updated list about the most common threats of uh, today's modern application that you find on the internet. In addition to that, um, you can store that data and keep an historic um, uh, backlog of the information that or security bugs that you know have occurred during your um, have occurred when you have been developing on that application. And, and learn from the, the mistakes that you have done in the past to start uh, to mitigate this happening in the future. Now, while this talk really doesn't provide you any step-by-step -step guide to install or deploy this in your application, I hope it inspires you to uh, that with just open source and open standards, you can deploy such a system in your organization. Um, 
we feel like with this approach, you can make security really accessible um, to everyone and test it uh, early in the development lifecycle. And again, every organization does this differently. We at SAUCE, we have a lot of ideas how testing security and testing the security of your application can look like. Um, and we are interested to talk. So reach out to us. And uh, with that, I want to give it back to Justin for the closing remarks. Thank you so much, Christian. It's very, very informative and very interesting. Um, I think Christian's point is a great one. I, I can tell you, having been in security for such a long time, that the silver bullet that Christian's referring to about the just the simple awareness and a little bit of education inside of the areas of our companies where the development occurs and where the ideas are, are spawning, from where the ideas are spawning, is, is really the silver bullet, is that, that we're actually aware of some of the choices that we're making and some of the the security implications to those choices. Um, I think with everything else, one of the promises of open source in particular and the open source standards is that we can all adopt them and adopt them quickly and they're flexible enough to be able to support our businesses um, and any other initiatives we have non-commercial, non but maybe non-commercial in nature. But this is truly one of those opportunities where a rising tide lifts all boats, that you know by leveraging these standards and these initiatives that we can increase the general security across the board of applications and websites and platforms and so on that are attached to the internet, thereby protecting all users of those platforms and those sites. So it, it truly is incredibly valuable and I would encourage you to, um, to investigate these things and, and, and see if they fit for you and your organization. And with that, I'd like to thank you all very, very much for your attention. Thanks to Christian for the expertise and the details. And uh, we hope you continue to enjoy the rest of, of the uh, content at this wonderful conference at uh, OpenJS World. Thank you. Thank you all. See you.